Hey, what's up, guys? How are you guys doing? Sorry, you know I was having technical uh, difficulties. That Illuminati Gotti is always coming at me. Y'all, listen, what's up? I know your girl has been gone because, listen, I got the flu. Things happen. Somebody put some roots on me. Whoever put those roots on me, y'all need a pay raise because baby, they work. But forget all that, baby. We have a major shakeup in the Sean Diddy Combs case. And baby, we cannot, oh, we can't forget about this, y'all. Let's get into this. First of all, how's everybody doing? Welcome, everybody. Listen, <laughs> Aiden said, Tisa, where you at? I need to call. Do I need to call someone? Um, here. Listen, I'm here. I'm recovering my strength, but forget all that. We need to talk about a huge major shakeup in the Sean Diddy case. And baby, y'all did not see this coming. It lets you know a couple of things. One, how seriously Diddy's taking this. Two, Diddy is being investigated for RICO charges as much as people doubted that. He is 100% being investigated for RICO charges. And baby, you are not going to believe who he is just hired as his new attorney attorneys and what charges he is trying to fight y'all when i heard this i had y'all know I because i'm trying to get better i wanted to just go to sleep but i said no 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 it is time for us to rise up tattletales it's time for us to rise up okay i'm just trying to figure out what I'm going to do with that. I'm sick of this mic. I want something smaller. Yes, this is what coming back to life makes you do. You get really, really picky. Okay, hold on. Are y'all ready? Let's get into this. Where do you guys actually want to start? Put your microphones first of all. I'm sick of this mess. Can y'all hear me now? I think you can. Okay, so where do you guys want to start? Do you want to start with the update on Diddy? Or do you want to start with how we know that he is facing severe criminal charges? And if he's not, baby, you can't tell by his actions and what he is doing. Okay? Let's get into this, all right? Hope everybody had a great week. I'm still trying to, if I pass out... <laughs> If I pass out on this live because I'm still recovering, you guys, Diddy didn't do this. This was pure old mother nature or whatever uh, roots are being put on me. Okay, y'all, let's get into this. <laughs> Somebody said we won it all. Okay, so let's get into this, all right? If you guys don't know, okay, Diddy is a major trouble with the Southern uh, District of New York. I have said multiple times, and I think we were the first to break it, that Diddy is under investigation with the state of New York, New York City, and also the Southern District, um, well, the of the feds, okay? I believe it's either the Southern or e Eastern District of New York. They're the same people that took down El, Chap El Chapo, um, uh, Harvey Weinstein, uh, just saying Maxwell, why is just slain? Whatever you say her name is right. I don't think she deserves her name, uh, any special thoughts, but who just saying Maxwell, it is a special operations investigation unit. Now I know if you guys are, have watched the channel before you're like, all right, Tisa, so what's new? What's new again? Remember what Douglas Wigmore and I believe Tyrone Blackburn, those are the two attorneys that are representing all the Diddy's accusers. I believe even Tyrone Blackburn is representing the person that Diddy hung out the 17th floor. We're not talking about Wale and that whole thing that happened in the recording studio. We're talking about, I believe it was a woman, maybe it was a man, you never know, that Diddy hung out of the 17th floor balcony and actually injured the person, okay? That's who's representing who. All right, now, when it comes to Douglas Wigmore and Tyrone Blackburn, they are both esteemed attorneys. Douglas Wigmore uh, has uh, represented, and this, just listen to why I'm telling you this, because it's all going to come around. You're going to need this information, okay? I only give you information that you're going to need further down the road to connect all the dots, okay? Okay. Douglas Wigmore uh, went against the head of the International Monetary Fund. He has represented Weinstein victims. Tyrone Blackburn has gone up against some of the biggest heavyweights in the entertainment industry to fight 
for money for his clients. Okay. Um, big, big names. And he has been largely successful as far as I know. Now, here's the thing. When I said that Diddy was facing RICO charges, Tyrone Blackburn, I believe, and Douglas Wigmore both either hinted, implied in their proceedings or whatnot, that Diddy had taken seed money from the BMF, right? And some of y'all were like, the BMF, what are you talking about? Big Meech about to get out and buy. And I'm like, ugh, ugh. the feds literally in the Eastern District of Missouri just made 35 arrests from the BMF. The Black Mafia family, they believe they are alive and well. And a lot of y'all were like, that's impossible because if he was facing RICO charges, he wouldn't just be having any old lawyer, blah, 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 blah. Well, guess what? Diddy has not only quietly sold off all of his businesses, well, not all, but definitely Diego. I think that's the only business he has. Sean John Macy was like, it's just corny, been corny since 2000. 14, come on now, knock it off. 29 felonies, zero convictions. Prison and jail are not the same. Knock it off, right? They dropped Sean John just because they probably was waiting to drop Sean John. Um, but his most lucrative deal with uh, Diego, Out Liquor, which makes Chirac, and of course, De Leon Tequila, he literally cut it off. Why? Because he needed that money. He needed that guilt. He needed that milk money. Why? Now, some of us guess is because he's literally liquefying all his assets so he can transfer it quietly, those funds quietly to his family. And if any other accusers come after him, then they'll hit the same wall that bad boy artists hit whenever they try to sue him. But remember I said, baby, that's the least of his worries. Harvey Weinstein thought it was all fun and games until that special operations unit got involved. And the same thing looks like it's happening to Diddy. He thought it was all fun and games, but guess what? It looks like he's putting that money he liquidated to good use because guess what? Diddy's also quietly hired two new lawyers to represent him. And when you hear who these lawyers are and when you hear who they've represented, it'll let you know that one, somebody tipped off Diddy to what the feds were doing. Now, I know what you're saying, Tisa, you've been yelling this for two months. I know, but I'm just a humble blogger, okay? I do want to say before I give this big reveal and give more information, we have to just say this, okay? What I'm saying has neither been independently uh, verified or denied right? Proven true or untrue in a court of law. Everything I'm saying is based off of legal filings, public knowledge, internet blogs, and of course what the streets are saying. Diddy has and continues to maintain his innocence. He is saying that he is going to fight for his name, his country, his woman. Is that Gina, hon? If it's Gina, I don't think he's fighting for her. But he has said that like, he has not denied it happened. He's just saying that everything is consensual, okay? The awful things are not true, okay? So let's get into this. Now, since we got that out the way, that Diddy is innocent as the, as the driven snow outside, just new and fallen, let's get into what the streets are saying. But baby, this ain't what the streets are saying. This is what can be verified in, in documents, okay? Diddy has quietly let go of his attorneys and retained two new attorneys. He looked at Douglas Wigmore. He looked at Tyrone A. Blackburn. He looked at both of them practice in uh, New York, right? Like I said, um, listen, if anybody got any gripes about anybody, they better call Tyrone. But anyway, okay, let me get to the point. He's quietly hired two powerhouse attorneys and their client list is scary. Not for the wins, but who they represent. And once you hear who they represent, it will let you know that one, Diddy has been tipped off, that the feds are two seconds from his butt, and those racketeering charges are net not just coming, but they are pretty much guaranteed. But also when you hear who his new two lawyers are, it's going to let you know just how much trouble he is in. We also have an update on what's going on with the Danity Kane, because if you guys don't know, people were saying part of the reason he did liquidate is because Danity Kane and day 26, but definitely Danity Kane is coming for the money that Diddy took. Y'all, let's introduce you to Diddy's new 
dream team. Diddy's new dream team. Baby, meet Bobby Sternheim. Does that meet Bobby? This is Bobby Sternheim, right? Now, at first, she looks like what? Your regular gym teacher that's trying to be all fly, pop the collar. You called her on a day off. She is on a date with her girlfriend and she don't feel like you damn high schoolers bothering her at the table. We're walking by. Hi, Miss Sternheim. And she's just like, oh, I can't stand these kids. I wish I could get a day off. She just looks like that. Doesn't she look like someone that drinks coffee and smokes a little bit too much marbles, right? But is always going to tell you how she feels, right? This is Miss Sternheim, right? Outside of the courthouse. Do you know who she represented? Do you know who some of her biggest clients' two dates are? Well, anybody, does anybody have a guess? Anybody have a guess? What were you thinking? Just throw a name in the chat. I'm at the chat right now. Who are, who do you think? Who do you think that she has represented? Do I have any guesses? Y'all want me to start guessing for you? All right, fine. I'll start guessing. Michelle Foster said, just say it. No, I will not say it. Okay, thank you. Shigma said, Chappelle, y'all, no. She has represented Jeffrey Epstein's right-hand woman to slain Maxwell. She's also represented the assistant to Osama bin Laden. Y'all, this woman is an expert an international trafficking, racketeering, terrorism, and everything other evil milady you can be. This woman is not the type of lawyer that an innocent man hires. But even if an innocent man does hire her, it's an innocent man that is that is facing charges of a magnitude that nobody ever saw coming. He has quietly fired his old lawyers and hired this powerhouse, but it's not over. He's also hired a second lawyer. This woman literally, literally, she represented Osama bin Laden's assistant. And this is after he became the world renowned Osama bin Laden. She represented Ghislaine Maxwell. Now, I do want to say this to Diddy. All right. Sorry, guys. Got to get comfortable. I do want to say this to Diddy. She represented just saying Maxwell. Ain't just saying Maxwell in court right now. No, I'm sorry. Ain't she in jail right now? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I don't make the rules. But isn't she in jail right now? Y'all, let's get into this. Also, another attorney that was hired. Does anybody recognize? Again, there we go. There go Bobby and her number one stunner client. Does anybody recognize this woman right here? Do you recognize her class? This is the lovely Miss Sean Hawley. Anybody that covers celebrity legal cases will know who Miss Sean Hawley is. She has represented a number of celebrity clients, including Kim Kardashian, Tupac Shakur, Snoop Dogg, Paris Hilton, Nicole Richie, Lindsay Lohan, Trevor Bauer, Danny Masterman, Tory Lanez, before he thought he was going to get a discount, he she literally was representing him. He almost got her disbarred. He thought that she he stole her legal strategy and then got some a, a ter, a insurance uh, law guys to represent him. And that's why he's sitting in jail. He should have kept Sean on the case. But he saw the way Sean, she was move, he was moving and was like, yeah, I recuse myself from this case. Now, why does Diddy has two, two attorneys? Well, quite simply because Diddy is facing a storm on two front. Remember, I told you guys that this is no longer a case. And this is why Diddy should have settled with all those women. This is no longer a case of, okay? Um, this is no longer a case of, oh, oh, we'll just settle. Is she oh, she was a hoe. She wanted it. We're beyond that. Harvey Weinstein thought this was funds and games too, until the feds came from it. Sean Hawley in my estimation, is to handle the settlements. She, he, she's to handle the civil trials. That is where she excels. That is what she does best. On top of that, she is a black woman. I would assume that most of the women, well, not most, but at least half of the women that are accusing Diddy of stuff 
are in fact black. We do know that lawyers play games like that. You don't want a white male yelling at a black woman while she's crying on the stand. The optics are just bad. But not only that, Sean Hawley is very good at what she does. Let me just go through the Sean Hawley stuff and we then we get back into Bobby because that's when things get juicy. Okay, so if you guys don't know, um, my PowerPoint presentations never cooperate. God, I hate them. Okay, ready? Sean Hawley is a partner at Kinsella Hawley is their comp Stein Saper LLP, a boutique entertainment and business litigation firm in Santa Monica. She began her career in Los Angeles uh, County Public Defender, handling hundreds of serious criminal cases from inception to trial. I first noticed her with Lindsay Lohan. She was the managing partner of the Los Angeles office of the Cochran firm and the head of its national criminal defense section. Mm. It's not over. Hold on, y'all. With more than 60 trials to her credit, Ms. Holly is the rare trial attorney who practices in the areas of both civil litigation and criminal litigation. She was a highly visible member of the O.J. Simpson defense team. And work. this is not a Stanley Cup. Y'all don't be freaking out in the comments, right? I had people curse me out when they thought it was. She was a highly visible member of the O.J. Simpson defense team and worked closely with Mr. Conkren on a number of high profile civil and criminal cases when the firm was known as the law offices of Johnny L. Cochran. Junior. Let me just take y'all through a little bit of our client list. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Among others, Miss Holly's represented or currently represents Kanye West, Justin Bieber, Lindsay Lohan, Nicole Ritchie, Paris Hilton, Michelle Rodriguez, Kardashian, the Kardashian Jenner family, because you know those mofos stay in trouble. Cat Williams, Shamar Moore. Accused Symbionese Liberation Army bomber Sarah Jane Olson. Celebrated Black Panther leader Ger uh, Geromino Pratt. Michael Jackson, Tupac Shakur, Snoop Dogg, The Game, Axl Rose, Mike Tyson, Sugar Ray Leonard, Lamar Odom, and Reggie Bush. Y'all, again, the fact that he finally hired his lawyers, the first one actually got him completely destroyed. The second one, I don't even know what they're doing. He's quietly hired these lawyers to take over what's going on with either settlement or at trial. With this, Sean Hawley is the girl that you hire when you need civil trouble. She is the girl. Now, she might be good for criminal too, but baby, for the what Diddy's facing Mm -mm. Sean Hawley, as good as she is, is not going to cut it because money can't buy him out, out of this, okay? Being Clive Davidson's alleged sugar baby cannot buy him. Clive might be able to invite him to the Grammy party because he can't come to the Grammys, even though how a lot of y'all said Clive literally had the Grammy pop uh, party popping while Whitney Houston, maybe she rest in peace, was leaving this earth. Somebody said Clive might be planning uh, to send Diddy up to Whitney Houston's suite, you know, and say he was just tired. I don't know what happened. Because even as they were taking her body out of the hotel, he still had the party going on and on and on. Again, Clive Davis and his industry connections cannot buy you out of this. His little billionaire sugar daddy, Burkle, I mean, maybe he can buy him out of it, but is Burkle willing to pay that money? Because as far as I know, if you can buy your way out of U.S. government charges, um, yeah. So who did he bring in? He bought in the lovely, lovely Miss Bobby Sternholm. It's either Sternholm or Sternheim. He bought in the lovely Bobby Sternheim. Let's get in to who this woman is. And this will let you know, finally, I hope you guys will realize, well, not y'all, but people realize just how deep the trouble Diddy is. This is, I don't even know why. Let me just stop before I get into this. I, it really, really boggles my mind. Um, hold on. Let's have a very special episode of Tisa Tells. It really boggles my mind that this man never settled. You saw what happened with Cassie. You saw what happened. They filed that mess and you were bought to your knees and everything you work, I, I would say work, but everything you stole 
over the last 20 years, you saw dissolve your reputation, your money, your deals, your respect. You finally got nominated for a Grammy and you can't even come in the building. And the only person that's willing to stand by you is your boo thing, Clyde Davis. And you still pay her the money she wanted. And then these other girls came out. And at that time, you could have just settled with everybody, no matter what it was. Here, take the MF and money. You could have settled with everybody. And by this time, today, you could have been well on your way. Diddy could have been well on his way to really building up who he was, building up his character back, doing all this stuff. Now look what's happening. Now look what happened. Diddy is screwed. He is liquidating. He is hot. He is literally hiding. But the worst thing is he somehow has realized that he can't beat the case. And people are saying that last time he was really, really sad about that stampede that happened at that college in New York City College. They're saying that like what happened last time in City College, um, well, let's be real. Sorry. Like what happened last time in City College, when Diddy feels that everything's off the table, he starts to get really hopeless. He starts to get in a really dark place. People are sitting, saying that Diddy has realized he can't buy his way out of this. There's not enough front money. There's not enough friends. There's not enough power. He cannot buy his way out of this. And people are saying that Diddy is despondent about this. He has not been able to show his face, but more importantly, this is my, now this is my opinion. I think he's probably really sad because he hasn't been able to have a freak off. Again, the way he was moving and from what we found out, it seemed like how did he, he was even getting work, according to Jonathan Adi, he was getting work done during the freak off on his conference calls, telling them, Shh, you, 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 Right? Muting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was literally like instructing while he was on the work calls. But all jokes aside, someone that seemed to have an addiction to something like that, and I will stand 100% by this, and I truly do believe this. I believe that, I'm not saying that he wasn't into some freaky stuff, but I do believe that, you know, just like he said, his sugar daddy, Ron Burkle, threw him his coming out party. Those were his words, not mine, right? I believe that, uh, Diddy had to, you know, bend over and take it to move his way up in the corporate ladder. Okay. This could be metaphorically, this could be actually literally. And I believe that he was subjugated to people that debased him and demeaned him. And I believe it gave him a, a, a certain taste, if you will, right? A, 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 a predisposition to want to place himself in the position of power, right? Basically what I'm saying is, Diddy probably had his fingernails and his toenails painted uh, white at one time. And maybe that's why he wanted to recreate that scene over and over and over. But this time he is in the feeling of power because it excites him, but also it taps into maybe a deep shame, but also a deep excitement, but also a deep acceptance. You know what I'm saying? Either that, or maybe he was just freaky deaky deaky. And as soon as he got some money, he said, mm. he walked into CBS and was like, where's the Sally Hansen uh, snow top white top? I'll take all of it. All of it, even the 99 cents essence nail polish, all of it, put it in. And let me get that, let me get that miracle top coat. You know, Diddy was probably, his girlfriends were probably so happy when gel polish came out. They ain't have to keep, because remember before gel polish, you had to keep repainting white fingernails like every two days. They were probably like, thank hallelujah, but Jesus. Anyway, right? Okay. So anyway, um, okay. So where are we at? So anyway, Diddy is finally realizing his money can't buy him out of this. However, his money can buy him the best defense attorney for the job. Listen to this woman's resume and tell me you, what you think the charges against Diddy are. Now, let's think about what Douglas Wigmore and I believe Tyrone Blackburn both put in their filings. Um, they alluded to the BMF. On top of the top of that, 
Excuse me, guys. Sorry, it's still the flu. It's past my bedtime. On top of that, let's also not forget that they actually, um, uh, the flu, I lost my train of thought. Oh, so they alluded to the BMF funded. So right now we have RICO charges, right? We have criminal organizations, RICO, racketeering, blah, blah, blah. They also alluded to the fact that there was a blank trafficking across state lines. And if the other woman can be believed, again, based upon information and belief, uh, maybe even international. Again, if he was doing this in America, what was he doing overseas to other girls? And guys, let's be serious. Puffy was very, very equal opportunity. So let's go into the lawyer that he has quietly hired to represent him. Bobby Sternham is a highly respected and seasoned trial law advocate, advocate right? Okay, so who said this? Thank you so much for the super chat. Cassandra Deluxe Edition said, Tisa, please dissect the lyrics of Cassie Cassandra's song, For Life. It's really juicy. Apple Music YouTube. Okay, you know what? As soon as I go through uh, her resume, because this is going to shock you guys, we're going to read the lyrics for For Life. Thank you so much, Cassandra Deluxe Edition. I, I appreciate that. Okay, let's get into this, right? Um, Bobby Sternum is a highly respected and seasoned trial lawyer advocating for her clients both inside and outside the court courtroom. She's built a reputation as a leading criminal defense lawyer experienced in handling a wide variety of matters in federal and state court for individual and corporate clients. Now, again, if you guys don't know, there is a big, huge difference when it comes to a lawyer and a trial lawyer. A good lawyer can know how to do a negotiation. A good lawyer can know how to wow the media. But someone if you are ever facing criminal charges like the ones that have been alleged that are about to be levied against Diddy, you want a trial lawyer. A trial lawyer has been in court. A trial lawyer knows how to play to the jury. A trial lawyer knows how to fight for everything you have to stay out of jail. And most importantly, the trial lawyer knows how to work with state and local prosecution, like for criminal prosecution to make sure you get the best plea deal, plea deal that you possibly can. Okay. Let's get into this. Um, she's a recognized leader in the local and national criminal defense bar for litigating difficult and complex cases. She uses her courtroom and advocacy skills in New York and beyond. Her playground is the Southern District of New York. Bobby's case portfolio is extensive, covering a wide range of criminal and civil matters. She holds top secret SCI clearance and has represented individuals extradited international. This woman has top secret SCI clearance. That is the highest clearance that a civilian can hold in governmental matters. The highest clearance that a civilian can hold in governmental matters. Let's keep going. Um, this is Diddy's new lawyer. Among her notable criminal cases, Bobby has tried international organized crime and racketeering conspiracies, international terrorism expenses, expense, uh, offenses, international telemarketing fraud, capital deletion, and interstate transport of blank media. She has represented federal defendants charged with death eligible offenses as both lead and alert counsels. Uh, and persuaded the Attorney General of the United States to deauthorize a federal blank penalty case. Oh, it's not over. It's not over. Hold on. Notable civil cases include a gen gender discrimination suit against the mission of Saudi Arabia, a financial interpleader action against Imelda Marcos, and a medical malpractice suit against the United States Bureau of Prisons. This is trying to make it a little dry. Apart from successful verdicts and settlements, dismissals, and favorable sentences, Bobby counts among her proudest professional experiences, having coached pro... Okay, who cares about that? Let me get her real resume up. Hold on, because I skipped over the... Uh, uh, the... Hold on, y'all, really quick. I skipped over her real accomplishments. 
accuse blank abuse. The thing is, the reason why they didn't have um, what's her name in uh, just saying and all these other people is because just saying's probably sitting in jail, so you know, they don't really want to go over with that. Hold on, y'all, my camera. One second, y'all. Sorry, my camera looked like it was freezing, but I'm back. Okay. They said accused blank abuse trafficking and Jeffrey Epstein confident to slay Maxwell isn't the worst person New York criminal attorney Bobby Starman has ever defended. She has built her net worth defending bad guys and even terrorists. Okay. Although there isn't a lot of information available about her exact net worth, a seasoned trial attorney has the seasoned trial attorney has defended some high-profile cases through the New York firm Fasulo Braverman and DiMaggio LLP. Oh, it's not over. She joined Jazane's legal team in October 2022. Um, blah, 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 blah. During the trial, Bobby stressed that Jazane has been rehabilitated since the crimes occurred many years ago. She asked the court to be lenient and painted Epstein as a true criminal. Now, why is this important? Because remember when they said there's all these rumors that Diddy is going to try to pin Chris Stokes with all this stuff? Not the stuff he did, but remember how they said that Diddy is going to start snitching on his friends in the entertainment industry. Why? Because he thinks that if they can bring the feds an even bigger fish, then he can somehow snitch. And true, he might lose everything money-wise, but he will gain his freedom. Again, this hasn't been independently verified, but it does look like the lawyer he's picking 100% tries to paint the people she's representing as the hapless victim, and there's a bigger, bigger perpetrator. Oh, it's not done. Okay. Uh, da -da -da. Now, Diddy might want to rethink this because let's not forget, Jasane was found guilty of conspiracy to blink, blink, blink. I can't even say everything she was found guilty of because I'll be demonetized, but whatever, right? Uh, da -da -da -da. Despite her attempt to portray Jasane as Epstein's unwitting accomplice, uh, she was sentenced to 20 years in prison. She was also fined 750K. Um, and, but she plans to appeal the sentence. Steinman is going to represent her in the appeal. Uh, okay, now here it comes. Steinman defended an aide to Osama bin Laden. Her most, her most notable case was in 2015 when she defended Osama bin Laden's henchman, Khalid al-Fawaz, who was accused of the 1998 bomb bomb bombs, right, of two U.S. embassies in Africa. The bomb bomb bombs deleted 224 people, including a dozen Americans. After Khalid was convicted of conspiracy to delete Americans in the boom, boom, booms, right? She said she was, she went on and said she was disappointed. Now, this is one of the reasons why she has one of the highest clearances. I'm just going through her resume to let you guys know what this man, Diddy, who maintains all his innocence, who he secretly snuck in to actually help him on his way. She said trying a pre-9-11 terrorism case in a post-9-11 era within blocks from the World Trade Center ensured that Khalid would never receive a truly fair trial by a truly impartial jury. I mean, no lies were told, but like, come on, you gotta be real. Like, are you serious, girl? She tried it. I'll give her that. Bobby knows how to pop her collar put gel in her hair in a Tom Cruise-inspired way, and baby, she knows how to try it. Anyway, uh, da, 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 da. oh, get this. A year after trying college trial, she was defending another terrorist, Mingua Pham, who admitted to a plot to Kabui to destroy London's Heathrow Airport. The defense was that he took the, the deletion mission to escape a training camp in Yemen. The judge didn't buy it and sentenced him to 40 years in jail. Now, she's a highly respected New York attorney. Now, I do want to say this. Everybody she represents, they run to her, but she doesn't seem to get anybody off. But maybe she keeps them alive. Maybe that's it. 
Now, she's highly respected as a leading criminal defense attorney. She was the first and only female recipient of the New York Criminal Bar Association's Award for Excellence. According to her bio, she's tried international, oh, this is an important thing, international organized crime and racketeering conspiracies. Remember we said that Diddy was facing RICO? International terror offenses, international telemarketing fraud. We already went through this, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so... Why is this important? Well, you guys, for a number of cases, let's take it back to, and we're about to read the Cassie lyrics, but let's actually take it back to what everybody was saying about the fact that Diddy is going to try to start pointing people, pointing things at other people, other record producers, other people in the industry, other artists. It can be said for the long term that the reason why people were so adamant. Okay. The reason why people were so adamant to defend Diddy is quite simply because of the fact that they were partaking in it too. He, they basically were like a band of hyenas where at the end of the day, Whenever Diddy got something going on, he might not have been paying people money. He might have used this as his calling card, but there were so many industry people, so many record execs, so many millionaires and billionaires that were partaking in this, that at the end of the day, Diddy has a big Rolodex. When people called him, when people called him the uh, hip hop Jeffrey Epstein, they were not joking around um, and they were not playing. Okay. They were not joking around and they were not playing. So again, I'm not, in, I'm not in, uh, in any way implying that, you know, he had an island and stuff with the underage, even though he is facing uh, charges of underage. But what I'm saying is, Let's look at the clues, right? First, you hire Sean Hawley, who is a queen of knowing how to settle. To settle is an art. To get clients to stay quiet is an art. To get the women or men that you are settling with to make sure that this never bothers you again is an art. One that his first and second lawyers couldn't do. But y'all, this second lawyer, Bobby, Bobby is literally set to destroy, I don't know, something bad is coming for this man. And when I say something bad, I don't feel sorry for him at all. But there's something very, very bad and very, very dark that is going to be exposed about Diddy. And the thing is, the Special Operations Unit has been quietly interviewing all the victims, okay, based on information and belief. They've been talking to attorneys. They've been interviewing inner everything that was set out in Cassie's thing, everything that was set out in the, the Jane Doe. They have been interviewing. They have been researching these ties to the BMF, these ties. Now, this is some really rumory rumory. So I must put a disclaimer that this is literally something that has been circulating in the streets that I've heard but I wasn't really paying it any mind. They're saying that even things as it pertains to Kim Porter and what happened to Kim Porter. Again, there's been a lot of speculation about what happened to Kim Porter. When the federal prosecutors come for you, they don't just come, they don't try separate cases. They come and they bring up all claims that they may have for you. So what's going on, okay? You have a woman that defended the henchman. When I said assistant to Osama bin Laden, I didn't mean his secretary. I meant his shooter, his right-hand man, the one that would let that chopper sing, if you will, right? That's who she represented. She represented the person that literally tried to destroy the London Heathrow Airport. She represented Jusain Maxwell. Oddly enough, they all lost, so did he? I don't know. Hope this money was well spent. Hope you got something. Like, literally, you told Harvey Pierre to stop cutting up all your soda cans because you're going to need them to hide some money. <laughs> but all jokes aside, something really, really, the feds, it looks like, city, state prosecution have 
dug up something super, super dark, something all sweeping, all encompassing. And judging by the legal people that he hired, he's going to need people to literally the same way he took those videos of Cassie and he allegedly took those videos of other women and used the MN and used them as cards to trade, to do this, to do that, to get business meetings, get this, get curry favor. It looks like it's the same way. Then now those people that were linking up with Diddy are now learning these violent delights have violent ends. And now the same people that were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me get that Cassie 2010 video. Let me get this. Let me get that. Let me get allegedly Tara Marie. Cause that's what's on the street now. And even though that has not been independently verified, right? Let me get this. Let me get that. It looks like these same people that thought they were just having key keys are now Diddy is going to use them as trading cards to see with the actual criminal authorities that don't care about the Clive Davis Grammy party. They don't care about his billionaire friends because baby, you can have a billionaire friend, but baby, the, the federal government got billions in their budget. Like they're just like, so what you saying? We all billionaires. We all billionaires. What you saying? Right? So they're just literally saying that now these people may be offered up as information Diddy is going to try to turn as informant for whatever larger things that he was involved with. This is assuming that Diddy, of course, is guilty, but even then, assuming that Diddy is not at the top of this. But if he is at the top, who could he offer? Because at the end of the day, what are you going to say? Shine. I'm not saying shine, but let's just say he's like, no, it was Mace, Craig Mack and them. Shine, Mark Curry, Cameron. It wasn't me. It was all them. They made me. And whoever else he worked with. I'm not implying any of these gentlemen were involved in that. I'm just doing this for comedic relief, right? They made me. Now what? Now what? Now what? Okay. They made you. Now what? You're still the most high profile. You still have all the money. You still have all the insurance. You still have the record thing. So you can't make somebody, you can't make Mace the head of all of it because Mace don't got the money. He don't got the power. He don't got the pull. So what's next? What's next? Okay. Who do you have higher? People are saying he has a lot of people higher and he wouldn't have hired these lawyers, especially Bobby. The Sean, I understand. Sean Hawley was the lawyer I would have thought he would have hired the first time when Cassie sued him. But apparently they took Cassie as a joke and they took her lawyer as a joke and they're the ones laughing all the way to the bank. Sean Hawley makes sense, but this Bobby woman, Esquire Stern, um, uh, Sternheim, Sternheim, yeah, how, how, how does this make sense? For what? And she recommend, she represents international, mostly. Rico, internationalist, international trafficking, international, all this stuff. So how, how does this make sense? What has Diddy been up to? Again, remember when I told you guys a couple of weeks ago that it looks like everything had moved overseas? Diddy's been hired at London, but Diddy spent a lot of time overseas. If you take someone, the same way you take someone from Detroit to New York, and that is... um interstate. You can take that same private jet and take it from New York to London. And now you got international. You can take it from Detroit to your island in Detroit, uh, Capri, you, and now you're international. Again, you guys, what mess is Diddy into? And the thing is, who tipped Diddy off as to, again, I know I've known for a minute. Sorry, getting comfortable. This flu is kicking my butt. My therapy was like literally, Sean Wheeler, thank you so much for the super sticker. And don't worry, Cassandra Deluxe Edition, we're going to get to the lyrics. But thank you, Sean Wheeler, for the super sticker. But all jokes aside, right? Um, I've known for a minute, and a lot of people have known that he has been being investigated. Just to be clear, his houses have not been raided. When the feds raid your house, they already finished their investigation. They did every single thing they already done. Trust and believe. His houses have not been raided. His offices have not been raided. However, house hasn't been raided. Office hasn't been raided. However, 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 
The investigation has been ongoing. And the fact that he hired Bobby, baby, he they found something. And they found something big. And he hired a lawyer that just, it defies logic. We all know that Diddy, if you guys don't know, I'll put it in a video tomorrow. His money isn't what it's seen. He's always been a bit of a hype man. And he's been propped up by his sugar daddies, in my opinion. I'll make a video tomorrow actually outlining exactly how his money has been. I'm not saying he's broke, okay? I'm not saying he's about to get a job at Walmart. No shade for working at Walmart. But Diddy is not ever going to be paycheck to paycheck. But Diddy lives a billionaire lifestyle and he has always greatly over-exaggerated his wealth. Even exaggerating how much of a millionaire he was. Let's not forget he got 50, 11 kids and he does live a billionaire lifestyle. Apparently it looks like that was bankrolled. So what do you guys think? Honestly, what do you guys think about this? The feds found something, y'all. And they found something big. And whatever it was, I think I have a hint on what it was. But I actually don't want to say it until, again, it's fun to have giggles and, you know, like talk about what the streets are saying. But I will never, ever, 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 ever try to mess up somebody's bag or to mess, whether that bag is monetary or whether it's having your perpetrator in jail. Like justice does, need, the wheels of justice do need to turn. OK, again, who am I? No one. But I do. I, I The wheels of justice have to turn. But whatever it is and whatever they found was so bad and he got so spooked that he hired the lawyer that hires international racketeering international protects international terrorists that literally represented Osama bin Laden's shooter. Y'all, y'all, Diddy is beyond, well, he should be beyond fighting for his money, but we all know it looks like he's still trying to hide it, right? But it's finally sunk in that his money can't protect him. And now he's putting everything he can, everything he can into, I'm out of juice. Now he's doing everything he can. Hmm. That's the best feeling in the world, isn't it? When you think you're out of juice, but then you take a sip and there's more. Mm. Best feeling. Anyway, he's doing everything he can to make sure he protects his freedom. What do y'all think? What do y'all think? Also, while this was coming out, I was going to make a story about this. And I was like, you know what? Let me just talk about this on live. While this was coming out, um, they said the radio personality miss. Let me pull this up. Let me play this for y'all. I put my real cat voice. This is Miss Jones. Well, one of, from what I understand, one of his closest friends. Can y'all hear it? Was the last one he dragged out paying her. He refused to pay her. She was the very, very last one. And a cat, it's something that is built in somebody. Um, and so, yeah, how about you blowing up my house or my car or anything like that? Oh, I could go because I don't. He already to put me in the trunk of a car. What? And it's on tape. You know, when we take you back in the room to do commercials, after you do an interview on the radio, and we take you in the we didn't know that the tape was running. And if I had to ask it, door, I wouldn't have believed it. The little Kim said, leave Jonesy alone. Jonesy don't hurt nobody. Stop. Yeah. You said it to me. You're my hero. <laughs> Girl, yeah. Wow. Are you kidding yeah. her? So I can say, wow. we're gonna smoke this fire. Okay. Sorry, guys. So anyway. Um, if you guys couldn't hear that, well, sorry about that. I'm working off a different mic tonight. Blame it on the flu. But listen. So this was radio personality, Miss Jones, Miss Jones, Miss Jones, Miss Jones. She's telling a story about the way Diddy was always a thug, right? This was around the time when Little Kim was popping. She said that Diddy allegedly threatened to put her in a trunk, and he was dead serious. Around that time, everybody don't like Wendy Williams, right? So everybody forgets the way that Diddy literally ran Wendy out of New York City. 
He ran that woman out of New York City. And because Wendy had a big mouth, she was always talking. People are like, yeah, that's what you get. But people forget Diddy did that to you, whether you were Wendy or whether you were Miss Jones. Anybody, especially women, that displeased him, he would go after them big time. She said that in the radio station while she was working, she said something he didn't like. He threatened to put her in a trunk, got in her face. It was so serious. Little Kim rushed to her aid and was pleading with Diddy, leave her alone, leave her alone. Jonesy, don't own, don't hurt anyone. She's good people. Leave her alone. And Diddy was trying to go in on her. This is a man. I see why he hired Bonnie. Probably the whole world was going in on that. But the whole point is he was doing that and terrorizing people. And he's been doing it for over a decade. Again, Sean Hawley makes sense. But what was Diddy doing overseas? And what was Diddy doing internationally? Hey, um, Tim oh, Tiffany Wiggins. Tiffany, Tiffany Wiggins, thank you so much for becoming a member. I appreciate you, mama. But thank you so much. But honestly, what was Diddy doing all that time? What was he doing all that time? Over these last years, internationally, from Miami to over thing, let's also not forget, remember when he flew Miami, uh, young Miami, to um. Uh, what was it, that Costa Rican trip or something? He took her to some island. It was a private island. I think he called it Love Island. But everybody was pretty much freaking out because at the end of the day, uh, Diddy uh, was buying out islands and everybody thought that was like so, so sweet with Young Miami. But honestly, what was going on on those islands? And I'm not saying Young Miami was involved. Please don't get... I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that the same way that Cassie said that he used her to hold his gat, used her as a front, used her for this, used that. What was he actually using his romancing of young Miami and all these other women? Because a leper don't change their spots. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, getting back to that, Diddy's in trouble for this much. His wealth is not anywhere what he said it is. Apparently, also, let's not forget that Diddy seemed like he was more than happy to let himself be used as his rich and powerful friends, whether it was to influence the vote, what because he got sued with Ron Burkle for that whole rock the boat thing. Y'all remember that, right? When he got sued with uh, Ron Burkle, you know, um, we know what's happening with the whole, well, we don't know what's happening with the evidence with that whole Tupac Shakur thing. This guy goes between saying he lied about everything. Then he goes into saying that, no, 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 Diddy was a part of it. What's going on with the De Leon uh, membership? You know, his career, people are saying his career is in jeopardy. What career? Like the album flop. He don't have De Leon unless he can like, uh, like uh, literally, I, I, I don't know what's going on. The only person that's really publicly standing by his side is Clive Davis. He's letting us know he don't care what Diddy did. That's his man. And y'all ain't never going to come between him and his man. Come in here, Sean. I'm just saying, whatever you do, do not take a bath. If he says he's going to run you a bath, Diddy, don't do it. Don't do it. He's also facing that $10 million lawsuit for stealing the trademark for Act Bad. How? That's all I want to say also, because it needs to be said. F. Did you get a $10 million lawsuit for a song that flopped? And it didn't flop because the city girls. It flopped because Diddy was trying to like, like reinvent himself. It, it flopped because Diddy is trying to reinvent himself. So you guys, listen. Diddy, <sighs> on top of that, even Chris Sean, Rock was on live talking about how Diddy was gripping up the owner of Zeus. This is a man that has been ruling with an iron fist for over two decades. And it finally caught up with them. But that's a Sean Holly issue. Again, let me go through the chat. What do y'all think that Bobby found? What do you think that the feds found and the city and state found? I think 
it's BMF. I do believe that maybe he was taking some of those pretty young things, right? Um, overseas on the jet. Something caught up with them. But who is he going to be able to throw underneath the bus? If I was a, a Diddy acquaintance, I would be really, 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 really worried. I mean, really worried about what Diddy knows, about what Diddy can prove, about who he's willing to throw under the bus. Diddy has no loyalty. And at the end of the day, if I was looking at 60 years too, I wouldn't have loyalty to anybody anyway. Baby, we all did this. But then again, I wouldn't be participating in, in freak offs and I wouldn't be selling people and I wouldn't be doing all this mess. I wouldn't be doing the mess with um, uh, Tierra Marie or whoever it is. I just, I, mm -mm. I, I listen, I know what you say, never say never, but I am 100% sure I will never be involved in a ring around Rosie. I just, mm -mm, mm -mm. I, I, I pray to God never as a victim, but I know to God on God, it will never be as a perpetrator. So, you know, um, so what are people saying? Rico and Diddy, blank trafficking, blank and blank, blank. Money laundering, blank trafficking, lots of dirty secrets. Maybe Big Meech and Southwest telling the feds how he was connected with, oh, oh, Jane. That's a good one. That's a good one. We didn't see that one coming. Somebody said, they all exposed and we won't have any music for 2024. Oh, play. No, see, here's the thing. I disagree with that. Herb, so listen, I somebody did say dirty money. He literally named this group that. Yes, listen, let me uh tell you this, right? I disagree with that. I believe that the people that are at the top of the music industry now, not all of them, of course, but there's a certain portion where the reason they were allowed, so you know how like they say to be an R&B singer, it's not enough to know how to sing. You have to be good looking, right? It's not enough to know how to sing. You have to know, you have to be good looking, okay? Um, thank you, Miss Two Calde. Thank you, Miss Two Calde. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for becoming a member of the channel. So let me just say this, y'all. The people that say like, if everybody gets in trouble, we ain't gonna have anybody to for music. And I know you were being funny. I know you weren't really trying to defend, but let me just say this. Maybe this is the purging the music industry needs because the way they say like to be an R&B singer, you gotta be fine, right? Now, there are some people that you're like, oh, I don't think they're like as beautiful or as good looking, but everyone that's a singer on a certain level is, unless you Aaron Hall, ugh, right? Is uh uh well the Aaron Hall now and the one that acts like just a crazed like lunatic, right? Um, I do believe that some people sneak in here and there, but it is a job requirement. You can not every R and B, not every good looking person becomes an R and B singer, but every R and B singer is a good looking person. Okay, now just hear me out on this. I believe that not every person has to be a blinkered, right? Has to be depraved. But I do believe that when Diddy's looking for people to keep around him, you don't want a goody two shoe talking about some, what are you doing? They're not conscious. No, that's illegal. Did anyone check their ID? No. Why is all this white fingernail polish underneath here? I don't think he's having anybody like that around him. You know what I'm saying? So it's almost like you have to be talented to maybe make it in the record industry, but in certain parts of the record industry, you also have to be depraved. And I feel like if we get all the depraved people out of there, then it will let the talented people in that aren't depraved. And the people that are talented, they're not going to have to force to become depraved. You know, it's kind of like people like, why so many talented people are R. Kelly's and Diddy's and this and that and the Axl Rose, no, 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 no. I do believe it's just like when you look at who was invited on Jeffrey Epstein. It's not that every politician was on Epstein Island. It was saying that the ones that went to Epstein Island had to be down with the itch, itch and giggles. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I feel like once we get all of 
these people of compromised morals and values out the way, normal people who are super talented, which is what the music industry should be, will be the ones. But again, in, in, in it seems like whether it's executives, business, music, definitely Hollywood, the people at the top are depraved and they make people, they get off on making people push their moral boundaries. And people are so desperate for the dream because maybe they got bills to pay. Maybe they got family to feed. Maybe their self-esteem is just so low. Maybe they come from an environment where their mama or their daddy or their cousin or whoever used to do that to them. So for them to be in a room and they got to do that to get ahead, it doesn't click. Whatever the thing is, I am 99.999999999% sure that anybody that says you got to do A, B, and C to get ahead, plus you need your talent, or you just can get ahead on your talent, I'm more than sure everybody will be like, okay, I'll keep my morals and my body in place. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, we just need to remove this gate. It's like every industry with money, it's like evil, depraved, psychotic, perverted trolls guarding the gates, right? Saying you got to give up everything to pass through, you know? And instead of yelling at the people that give it up to pass through, we need to like abolish the monsters at the gates, you know? It's, it's, it's that, that's my view on it. That's my view. Everyone that had to compromise themselves and the people that for whatever reason decided not to compromise themselves, but lost their careers. Everybody is in the victim. And we should be looking at those monsters saying, burn those mofos down because what the heck? You know what I'm saying? Because they're never going to stop. And their appetites. You that's the thing about people like that. You turn, it's like turning the other the other cheek when you see somebody is like beating on their kids or their 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 wives or a husband or whatever right when you turn the other cheek about depraved stuff people get worse they get it's like especially when it comes to perverted stuff it's like their appetites get deeper and sicker you leave somebody with a perverted appetite oh that's just their business and you walk away and come back seven years, baby, you gonna be like sprinkling holy water everywhere. Like, oh, how did y'all think about this? Those type of things evolve and the things they need to satisfy themselves. And then, again, this isn't even me on some conspiracy. This is psychological. It just gets worse and worse and worse because at the end of the day, it's about control. You can literally be there and be like, all right, everybody that wants to be a, a musician, Smear peanut butter and jelly on your face. Mm, that's right. But it's not about the peanut butter and jelly smeared on their face. It's about that control. So once they got a million people being like, yeah, mm, 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 I love peanut butter and jelly. They don't want that anymore. Because, ew, it wasn't about the peanut. It was about who they would control. So now they push people's boundaries more. Okay, we'll do it while you hop on your leg. Let's just say now you got six people willing to do it, hop up with all their might, smear and peanut butter. Now they got something else. They got something else. They got something else. Pretty soon they got you drinking from the golden showers and got you munching on two girls in a cup, like just doing crazy mess. And then that's not enough. Again, the, uh, you can blame the victim. I know y'all aren't, but people can blame the victims all they want. But at the end of the day, it is a cancer that's going to keep growing. You have to go into the nest and just eradicate it. Literally, you have to eradicate it. And true, you cannot eradicate the way what people truly want in their minds. But baby, you can be like, if we find out you won't spend the rest of your life in jail, that's enough to keep people straight. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Oh, thank you. Rudy said, great job reporting, Tisa. Thank you so much for the super chat, Rudy. Oh, really quick. We got to read. Hold on, Cassandra. I almost forgot. Thank you so much, Rudy. Cassie's song for life. Hold on. Let me see. Cassandra's song for life. We got to get to lyrics. Hold on, guys. Cassandra's song for life. Wait, hold on. 
Okay, so this is Cassie's song for life. Oh, here we go. Let's read Cassie's lyrics. She said, you know that I will, so don't say I won't. You know that I, K-I-L-L, -L, so don't say I don't. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you for life, I love you for life, and I'll do whatever, whatever, you know I'm the type, know I'm the type. What you do, I do, what you say, I say. If you're cool, I'm cool, can we be okay? I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you for life, and I'll do whatever, whenever, you know I'm the type. I want everything to be for you. I want everything to be for you. I'm the love of your life. I'm a love you for life. I'm in a trance. This might be the last chance. I want everything to be for you. I want everything to be for you. I want, I want, I want everything to be for you. What they say we do, I will never say. If you're cool, I'm cool. If we stay this way, uh, I'll always ride when they say I don't, they don't know. No, they can't relate. I want everything for you. I'm going to love you. I'm going to love you. For life, for life, for life. You see me there. You want to make a move. It's your chance. Okay. So basically, definitely, now I'm about to get into Flo Millie. Flo Millie, y'all. Um, listen, those lyrics, I see what you're saying about their deep. Cassie, at the end of the day, was, and I don't mean to disrespect Cassie in any way because I got so much compassion. She was Diddy Slade. She was well-dressed. She started a million things. And that's why I think he was able to hide her in plain sight. Kathy was always like a breathtakingly beautiful woman, right? So she never looked broke down. She never looked like a character from Hustle and Flow. But it's crazy to me the way we see. We saw her with half her hair pulled out. We saw her getting scars on her face. People literally saw her getting beat down and stomped down in the streets. Oh, by the way, you guys, y'all want to hear some tea before I go? Cause I do have to go because you know, bedtime and I'm about to pass out. Y'all want to hear some tea? Y'all want to hear some tea? Um, you know, Roger Bonds, Diddy's attorney. Oh, Diddy's attorney. You know, Roger Bonds, that bodyguard with Diddy, right? Y'all know uh, Roger Bonds, uh, one of the reasons why he was talking about, hold on, y'all, I need to uh, fix my, get my laptop charger, hold on, really quick. Okay, so hold on, I need the charger to my phone. Okay. Okay. I'm back. Okay. Plug in. So y'all know Roger Bonds, right? That was Diddy's head of security at one time. Remember how he was ranting about you stay loyal to me. I stay loyal to you. That's what we do. Ba 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 ba. And he seemed like he was having like a little bit of a nervous breakdown and all this other stuff. And I was like, what the F E is going on, right? Well, remember all that? Because one thing I was wondering was, how does Roger talking about, you want me to say quiet, you want me to say nothing, but you ain't defending me when I need it. I guess he needs money for his son's fun. His son's rotten in the jail. He swears his son's innocent. He says that nobody actually cares. But what was his connection to Diddy and why did he want him to feel, be so quiet? Now, at first I thought it was because of Cassie, because remember Douglas Wigmore put it in the lawsuit that Roger Bonds, the head of security, witnessed all this, right? But y'all, do you know what else Roger Bonds allegedly witnessed? Do you know what else Roger Bonds actually did? Do you know what Roger Bonds actually participated in? What the streets and certain witnesses are saying? What happened when Roger Bonds was in his employee, besides Cassie being brutally assaulted over and over and over again? Mm hmm Think about it. Was Cassie seeing anybody at that time? Was there anybody that for whatever reason, Cassie just couldn't stay away from? Was there anybody that Cassie was seeing or texting that had Diddy so enraged? He threatened to blow up that man's car. Was there anybody 
that was Diddy's right hand man, commander, head of security that ran errands and did stuff for Diddy? And there was there anyone that needed somewhere between five and fifteen thousand dollars? And was there anybody that was on the West Coast at the time and was ID'd in Kid Cuddy's driveway? Making that happen? Would this be? Was there anybody whose name rhymes with Bodger Bonds? Yeah. Y'all, the streets are saying that one of the reasons why Diddy, Roger Bonds is so furious at Diddy and was so furious at him and was like, I kept your secrets and you ain't helped me and you abandoned me and why he was acting like Diddy owed him something when he should have been literally suing Diddy, talking about some loyalty. I would have been right up on there talking about some. He made me. I didn't want to go to Kit Cuddy Chow. I should know. Catchy and Kit Cuddy are in love. Leave them alone. I don't want to do this. But he said, he literally grabbed me by my throat and said, you better get out there. So I walked there and I didn't wait to. And I put it in his car and then his car went kaboom. And I felt so horrible. I've been abused. Y'all know I would have been falling out in the courtroom, on the floor. That man right there, please don't let him hurt me. Don't let him hurt me. I would have been, y'all literally, y'all would have been sitting there in the courtroom just rolling your eyes like, she always been in 20 on 10. I would have been on that floor. <laughs> Diddy would have literally scratched his eye and I would have been like, oh, please, please, he's gonna hurt me. I would have been, acting up because Roger Bonds literally missed the bag. He was so big, but they say that Roger isn't actually healthy. He actually does have an issue with diabetes and a few other things. So he's kind of like not well, and he has a lot of stress. And of course he's worrying about his son, right? But the streets are saying that Roger Bonds was the one that Diddy paid to go handle Kit Cuddy. And by handle what he promised Cassie he was going to do at Paris Fashion Week was make Kids Cuddy's car go bye-bye. And he was going to wait until Cuddy was in the house with his friends. And who else was on property? Roger Bonds, Diddy's head of security. Y'all, listen, based upon information and belief, I actually do 100% believe this is true. And this just isn't, isn't, I can't tell the sources, but hear me out, right? Um, this seems to be super, super legit. This is also the reason why Roger is always screaming that Diddy owes him so much more. What I do want to know is if this is true. And California got this law till 2026 that you can resue your employer. Um, why? Or even then, why did Roger not go to Diddy? and say, you made me do this. I don't care. They looking for you anyway. I'll say you paid me to do it. Baby, we can both go to jail. Or we can both stay out and live our lives. You will just write a check. Mm, a few more zeros behind there. All right, all right. And then I go bye-bye. And you go on with your life, dealing with the mess you made. All right? And by the way, if you like, I don't even need to testify about all the white nail polish that I saw over the last 20 years. What the hell was Roger Bonds on Instagram Live going crazy, do it like going crazy, losing his mind, doing the la, uh, la bottom, like, like literally losing his mind when at the end of the day, right? At the end of the day, you had, you were literally trying to extort somebody on Instagram Live when you could still hire an attorney and get everything you owed. Your son don't got to worry about legal fees from here to eternity. And this man is doing the, 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 like, I, I don't under, I don't understand people sometimes. I, I really don't. But then I guess. That's how Diddy stayed on top for so long, right? Right? You didn't keep people around you 
that forget about being disloyal because Diddy screwed him over. Forget about disloyal because nobody wants disloyal. You didn't keep, you kept people around you that were afraid to go against you. You kept people around you, um, uh, you know, I just, yeah, I just don't. Yeah, I just don't understand. You keep people around you that are afraid to go against you. Because I would have lawyered up. If I was someone that Diddy did dirty, baby, and I saw what God did for Cassie, I'd have been like, Lord, I see what you did for Cassie. And I want you to know I'm still here. I'm right here. I'm right here. I would have prayed on it. I did the Cardi B and call my mama and then I had to call my lawyers and baby, I would have been for the next six weeks. Y'all can talk all the trash you want. I would have been like, mm -hmm, hit him up style. I would have literally been like, <laughs> make his pockets hurt. Da -da 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 -da. Listen, I listen, I would have, what is going on? Huh? I thought you had proof of Diddy being put in a straitjacket, being sedated by paramedics, hitting off the lunch. What are you talking about? Brentwood in Beverly Hills. Are you, are you okay? Are you okay? What is going on? Are you, what are you talking about? Can people please stay in the topics? Are you okay? You seem a little bit, I don't know. Are you okay? Anywho, I don't know where that story came from. I, has anybody ever said that Diddy's losing his mind? We were talking about Roger Bonds on live losing uh, his mind. I don't know. Did I jump in late? Who's Jay? What's going on in the chat? Hold on. I don't know. What's going on in the chat? Hold on, y'all. I don't know. But anyway, right? I just honestly think, oh, look, so maybe Roger Bonds did get an attorney. Hold on. Jane Ho said Roger Bonds recanted his whole story about Diddy. He did an interview taken up for Diddy. So Diddy cut the check to Roger Bonds. He ain't said nothing. I said, okay, well, then that makes sense then. Because if Roger Bonds is the person that did the Kit Cuddy, like everybody's saying, right? And this isn't just me just talking. This is, well, I'm not even going to get into it. But again, believe what you guys want to believe. But this will make sense. Why did he actually cut the check? It wasn't because of the Cassie stuff. Because he's already settled with Cassie. Cassie's not going to bring claims against him. It was because of that Kit Cuddy stuff. Um, Listen, I don't know. <laughs> so what do y'all think? <laughs> what do y'all think? I think, listen, I think, listen, Diddy is done for at the end of the day. Listen, I think that Diddy is done. <laughs> I think Diddy, listen, Diddy's done, but at the end of the day, right? Diddy's done, but at the end of the day, I do think that at the end of the day, he hired the light, light lawyer. Now we can argue about whether Diddy is, um, oh. Oh, I get it. The title, Diddy's Lost His Mind. Are, are these people that don't, are, 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 is there any black people in the chat? Can somebody explain what he's lost his mind? That doesn't actually, it means like he's moving reckless. If, I don't know. I feel like whoever that troll was, they're not American. Can somebody please explain the African-American AAVE colloquialism? You've lost your mind to people. Okay. Can somebody, can somebody explain that? Two people. 
Listen, I think whoever the troll is, is probably in English, probably looks like a drum rat. Like, I don't know. I don't know. But I don't know. I just think people don't understand colloquialism. This is a black American chat. When somebody says you've lost your mind, that usually means you either won. If they're your friend, it means like, yo, I feel you. Like, I F with you. And, and let's do it. If somebody says they've lost your mind, you've lost your mind and they are not cool with you. And they're like, yo, you lost your mind. That means you're about to get your butt whooped. If your mom tells you you lost your mind. But you know what? We're not getting into what you lost your mind means. All right? It either means I mess with you hard or you about to get like your butt whooped. Or, yeah, you about to get your butt whooped. Anyway, right? <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Now people in the chat talk about, I'm waiting for paramedics and straight jacket. Are you, are you? Please go sit in the corner. Can we listen? We Please, please, please wait. Come to the front of the class. You're going to need extra attention. All right. <laughs> anyway, y'all. Let me get out of here. This flu is kicking my butt. I don't feel like it anymore. Let me get out of here. But I promise you guys tomorrow for Saturday and Sunday, I'm going to make up for lost time and try to make those in the heavy posting days. And then Monday, I will be back up and running. All right? All right, you guys. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>